buck right here. Can I shoot him? I don't think he'll be able to get it on camera. What? Can I take him? The white tail run. That's wrong. For us, it's the big event. That time where it all comes together, or it doesn't. From dawn until dusk, through the highs and the lows. All of it for a brief opportunity to cross paths with America's most pursued big game animal. For four hunters in four different states, there's a little bit of chance and a hell of a lot of work. That is a giant. But it's all worth it for that one week in November. It's 7.30 a.m. on November the 3rd. It rained all night. All night, still raining. The rain's about to clear up, though, at about 9 o'clock. I'm back in the same saddle. I've sat here for two full days, daylight till dark. I'm kind of all in on this big deer. It sounds like uh, Clay's getting wet down in Arkansas. It sounds like he got rained on. Mark dropped into a hole full of big bucks down in Iowa somewhere. Back in the same spot as last night. Bucks were running like crazy. There are three different mature deer that have been on camera the last day. And this seems like a spot they could definitely come cruising through. I don't know what Spencer's doing. He's probably eating some donuts or something at a gas station. But I would think today would be a really good day for somebody to drop a big one. And you just roll the dice as a hunter because I could go to another farm where I know there's a bunch of deer and probably some pretty good bucks and have a better chance of killing one of those. Or I could stay here, put all my chips on the table for killing this big deer. I'm a little concerned. I feel like I'm leaning too heavily upon the bumblebee tuna when times get hard. It's pretty early to be cracking into the tuna. But I found it's a pretty good way to make deer show up is to do something you shouldn't be doing. I'm gonna bail on this spot. I have not seen a deer all morning. The last two mornings we've seen quite a few deer come through this little gap. I was looking for a reason to not hunt here. And uh, I think this is it. Uh, maybe we're wearing our welcome out here, but we're gonna go to another farm, check some cameras, and hunt this afternoon over at a different place that has quite a few more deer than this place. So hopefully we'll see some. So that's our plan. So we're gonna get down, and get out of here. It is morning three, November three, six forty-seven. Shooting light starts in about forty-five minutes. This is where we sat on the first morning. This is where we sat yesterday morning. And this is where I found that cluster of scrapes. Yesterday, coming out of the woods, found some scrapes there, which are rare on this property. And so it's kind of the best intel I have on where these bucks might be traveling to bed. So we're gonna be there waiting for them. Uh, it may be another dud, 
like yesterday where we see zero deer or it might be exactly where we need to be. So I dropped some pins there on, on X and that's where we're gonna be sitting when the sun comes up. if you don't see him go down within like 50 yards so <sighs> so I'm go that way we had all these does filing in front of us and I was focused on them and then all of a sudden like right here probably like 30 yards there was a deer kind of behind a tree I was trying to make out what it was but it was it was hard to tell. Finally, once it wasn't locked onto us after a few minutes, 
I was able to pull up my binos and see that it was a look like a mature buck. He didn't look like he was gonna give us a lot of time because he was he was staring at me. I felt like I was on him, but I have never taken a rifle shot that close. hard to tell exactly where he was you don't always get like a traditional blood trail with a rifle that you get with a bow so I'll just kind of look through this area he could have been anywhere within 50 yards here I'm not certain where yeah I'm not seeing anything yet So I think we walked to where we last saw him. <sighs> Got another bullet in just in case. See him up here, bang down. Oh, man. I was convinced that I messed that up. I have never in my life taken a shot that close. Oh. I am so stoked. This is the buck. This is the buck that I wanted to kill the whole first day. Just like textbook mature western whitetail oh man three years ago where I was like all right no more I'm gonna hold out this year I'm not gonna kill another four by four and then a four by four walked by and I killed him and it was just like still so exciting and uh, I haven't stopped since like this still just gets me so stoked just so happy November is the best. I'm gonna send those boys a picture right now. That's like, uh, this is the most exciting part. That's, that's number two, I think, is sending out photos. Oh. Good news. Group chat update. Spencer just killed a dandy. Real solid. I'm going to send the group a picture of me wearing these gloves, and I guarantee you Clay Newcomb is gonna text back or tell the camera and be like, what a Yankee. Him and uh, him and his hillbilly ways, they don't, they don't wear gloves down there. Too cool for gloves. They like to get their hands dirty. Day one and two, Spencer just sent us pictures of rock, so it's to see something different. Although I don't know why he's using those gloves. A little blood in the hands is good for you. This is such a typical run situation. Just in your head you're like, this is gonna be on fire. But man, it's so boomer bust. I'm just sitting here wrestling about what I should do. Part of me thinks I should stick it out somewhere up here just because that camera location has been so hot with the rut a lot of times. And for whatever reason, this, this pinch point below me here is just not doing it so far. Another part of me though is tempted by what they're doing back behind me. They're picking the corn on the main fields. I'm sure does are going to be hammering that fresh cut corn as soon as those combines are out of there. I'm gonna get down and hang a, a camera here. 
it's not gonna really do me any good this week. I don't really care about it this week. But since this is my first year hunting this property, I wanna drop it on this this pinch point right down here and just see who comes through from here until probably I'll probably come down a bullet in January or something. Tonight's that wild card night. I'm not sure if it's too early or not for that. Wrestle with it for the next couple hours till my head hurts. So I've decided to move to the other side of the property because, as you might be able to see on this field, the farmer has picked, he's working on picking the second half of the farm. So there's fresh cut corn on the ground. I think there's gonna be deer porn out in there. Does out there means bucks out there. So I'm gonna drive around to the other side, grab my decoy, sneak in the back so I can get set up on that fresh cut isolated field. And uh, I feel like we're gonna see something good and, hopefully get someone to commit to the decoy. So that's the game plan. I'd love to get in a debate with Mark Kenyon about scent control, and I have. So much work that in that period of my life, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna cut it out and see if I kill as many deer. I killed just as many deer when I did not use scent control products and you just hunt the wind. So what we're doing today, we're sitting in a spot and deer very well may wind us if they come from a direction I do not anticipate. If we were scent controlled out to the T, there is still a high likelihood that they would smell us. So I have yet to see the, the value of investing that much of your life into something that gives you just a small return. Now, Mark Kenyon would say that if there's anything that even gives you like a 5% chance better of killing a deer, it's worth it. And I, I agree with that. I'm all for making the best possible effort towards a deer. But boy, sometimes when you're running and gunning and moving, scent control is just a joke. You're kind of fooling yourself if you think you're covering up your scent. But to appease Mark Kenyon, I'm gonna spray down my stuff. It's not your clothes that they smell, it's you. So this is like putting a, you know, a cow pie in a plastic bag and spraying down the plastic bag to make the cow pie not smell. They're not smelling the plastic bag. This is the plastic bag. They're smelling what's in the plastic bag. But man, just to make Mark happy. It's 4.15 p.m. November 3rd. That's evening number three. There's this little finger of corn that pushes into big, thick system of draws, which looks like gray bedding. I'm tucked in alongside of that with a decoy here on the edge. Hopefully, eventually, a good buck will come out of here see that decoy work his way down to uh, get rid of his competition. And I'll be 20 yards away waiting for him. And I'm sitting here in just perfect weather in a spot that should be so good and it's just dead and I don't know why but it just feels like any second a cruiser could come through here Then they ended up getting downwind of us and seeing us up in the tree, so that's not good. Just about out of light here. 
had a doe and a fawn come right in. I almost shot the doe. I thought she was by herself. And then I saw the fawn down on the bottom, so I decided to pass her. I expected to see more deer here. And we may yet. We've got about 30 minutes of shooting light left. So, very still, very quiet. I've got a lot of faith in this spot. I think I'm going to come back in the morning and give it one more try. At least till launch and then uh, maybe make a switch. Sneak out of here and make a new game plan. 